All right, let's begin. Uh, this is the uh, uh, College of Ag Food and Environmental Science Internship Informational Seminar. What I'm going to do here is talk about uh, why you want to do an internship, how to find the best internship, and then some of the, I guess, operational mechanics of uh, what you want to, uh, you know, kind of get, get set before you head out uh, to the job site. Let me start by saying that an internship is extremely important. The old adage that it's not what you know, it's who you know, is only half right. It's actually both, in about equal measure. Um, at the level that you folks are going to be competing, it's going to take more than just a degree to really set you apart from your competition, because everyone is going to have a degree. What you really need is something extra, and that would be things like experience, pertinent experience on your resume, as well as getting your name out there and having your name out there. And those are two things that an internship will provide for you in a great degree. Uh, that's why uh, the college enjoys such a high placement rate, because many of our programs either require or strongly recommend an internship. So when you leave here, you're going to be uh, very competitive. And that's, again, something you want to look at when you look at choosing the best internship. And once you get there, how to maximize the benefit of that internship. All right, so what is the internship? Uh, it can be paid or unpaid, it can be volunteer or paid. Um, volunteer uh, s skills are every bit as, uh, as, as impressive as paid skills. In fact, we call these transferable skills. You can get those skills anywhere, working at a convenience store or working for that actual organization. It both means the same uh, to an employer, as long as you have those skills. Whether or not you got paid for it doesn't really matter. In fact, you could argue that doing it without pay may be even more impressive, just because it shows your employer that you're willing to you know, look beyond just your own immediate gain uh, when working. And that could maybe uh, make a statement. Um, having said that, I would say probably 95% or more of our internships are paid. And I would strongly recommend that you do get a paid internship. Uh, for first, for number one, you deserve it. You're well-educated, motivated. You're going to be bringing a lot to the table. And so you deserve to be paid. Uh, and of course, you know, you need to be paid to, you know, at least pay tuition, room and board, and all that good stuff. Um, the one exception I would make would be Let's say you find the perfect position as far as setting you up for, for, um, for being successful entering the job, I mean, the, the career market. Uh, for example, maybe it's uh, working for an organization that you would really like to work for in a position that you would really like to start in. And who, you know, maybe even additional things like maybe just convenience, maybe it's close to where you live. So in those kind of circumstances, I would entertain a volunteer position if it's just the perfect position as far as getting you set up for your career. It's something that we call deferred compensation. In other words, you won't be getting paid at that moment, but it will parlay into a career which then would, would compensate you. So that's what it would be my exception. All right, uh, real work experience, which again is going to look great on your resume. One thing I talked about to my, um, to my uh, students going out on internships is to keep track of everything that you do. Every new task, as small as it is, because of those, what I mentioned before, those transferable skills. Um, you know, if someone walks up to you from the, you know, public and asks you a question while you're out there working, you're probably not going to remember that. But that, again, could be public contact, might be interpretive services, might be something like, you know, plant identification, whatever the question was. And those are transferable skills that should really show up on your resume. So I tell all of my uh, interns to make note every couple days of everything new that they did, especially the small things that they may not remember. So again, you want to really maximize this opportunity, in this case, from the standpoint of, of getting uh, job experience. And then uh, based on education learning objectives for which the student then earns university credit. Let me just mention at this point that an internship is not a summer job. Those are two very different things. And your future employer knows that. There's a really, really good chance that they did internships. So they know that it's not just a summer job. A summer job is where you're coming into an organization, you're filling a little niche, maybe doing one thing all summer long. An internship, you know, we have, you know, working relationships with these employers and uh, they know that what we expect as far as an internship goes well beyond that that they are to basically kind of take you under their wing 
and mentor you um, in that in that uh, in that uh, position, as well as allow you to get a taste for many different uh, positions within that organization. Uh, so it's like I say, it's it's much more structured than just a summer job, <clears throat> and. Um, Many, if not all, of the employers that I work with do a very good job of, again, exposing the students to a lot of different uh, career potentials um, as they as they get them experience throughout the organization. Uh, and and part of that then is uh, part of that structure is these learning objectives. Now I don't want to get too far into this because uh, I really talk about this when I talk about the pre work when I cover the pre work seminar. Um, but let me just say that these learning objectives are about a dozen bullet points that you will work up where you basically define what it is that you want to give out of this internship as far as your experiences. So, and they're categorized. One category is skills. So what kind of skills do you want to pick up on this internship? Maybe it's utilizing a certain piece of equipment or doing a certain you know, accounting operation. Whatever the case is, you put that in, all right? That's one category. The other category is what you want to learn about the actual organization. And the third category is what kind of communication skills do you want to develop? So you sit down and you just kind of brainstorm about a dozen of these bullet statements. And that's your rough draft of learning objectives. You then make an appointment with your faculty coordinator, uh, one of your professors, and you sit down and you go over that rough draft. And they'll give you feedback, well, you know, that really should fit in this category here. Or have you ever thought about, you know, getting this experience? You know, uh, we've had a number of, of, of interns work with this organization in the past, and I think getting this kind of experience would be really helpful for you. So they can really help coach you in this process, okay? Then you take that draft, and within the first week on the job site, you sit down with your supervisor. And so really it's a chance for you and your supervisor to get on the same page as to what both of you expect from this internship. So it opens up that line of communication where you can discuss what it is that you want to do. They can discuss, well, okay, we can't really do that this summer, but you know, maybe we can do something closely later. So it opens up that line of communication. Much better than just you know, showing up on day one, okay, where do I start? You, know, you sit down and kind of plan out uh, the next three months. So that's what I mean by structure. All right, so that's an internship. Okay, benefits. Develop professional contacts. Again, who you know, so important. Again, the level that you folks are going to be competing, it's not really about you know opening up a classified section of the newspaper. It's a lot of times not even job announcement. A lot of times it's just word of mouth. I can't tell you the number of times. I mean, within the profession, we all talk. You know, we go to conferences, we go out to lunch. You know. And we talk. And a lot of times, you know, oh, we need to find somebody to do such and such. Oh, we had a really good intern that worked for us last summer. Uh, they showed a lot of potential. They did something very similar. Let me dig up their contact information, and we'll have them get in touch with you. That happens all the time. So, again, developing, that's, that's why networking is so important. It's not just getting your name out there and so people remember your name. It's so that they can talk about you and they can, they can recommend you. That's really what it's all about. Uh, enhance and develop technical communication and business skills. Again, develop that resume to make you competitive. Uh, you can assess career options. You know, within that, you know, kind of go out there and see if it's really what you thought it was. You know, when I was, you know, before I went to college, when I was, you know, 17 years old, and I was thinking about, okay, I want to do this. I really didn't know what that career path was like. I had a, a vague notion and maybe wishful thinking. Uh, this gives you a chance to actually go out there and see if it's what you thought it was. Uh, and if so, also where to specialize, you know, where to find your niche. And you can come back with time to kind of customize the remainder of your curriculum with maybe a minor, maybe some substituted courses, uh, whatever the case may be. So you can kind of assess those career options. <clears throat> It also allows you to assess the actual organization, looking at its structure and function. You know, find out, you know, if it's, you know, a place you really want to work. You know, are the people happy there? Uh, is there upward mobility? Is there, uh, is there job fulfilling? 
you know? So you're also kind of gauging them as much as they're gauging you. Um, so, you know, sometimes I have uh, like a student come up and say, well, and I'm in the, the, the natural resource management field. So they may come up and say, you know, I want to work for the DNR, but I'm not really sure if I want to be, you know, a fishery specialist or wildlife. Well, get, the, get an internship with them in one of those two areas. And again, being an internship, not just a summer job, uh, a lot of times they'll maybe allow you to shadow uh, that other person uh, and see what that is like. And so again, you can kind of get uh, a feeling for what the different options are and what you find to be the most compelling. All right, develop human relations skills. This is something you can't learn in the classroom. Uh, and by virtue of the fact that this is only a three month, you know, job or career, I should say, um, if you don't make the best first impression, it's not the end of the world. You've learned something. You've learned, okay, I've got to comport myself in a more professional manner. I need to, you know, address my peers in a certain way <clears throat> and so on and so forth. Uh, and again, this is kind of learning as you go. And if, like I say, you don't do the best the first time out, that's why you're doing it. So you can, you know, improve for when it really does matter, when you're entering in your actual career. <clears throat> like I say, you can't learn this uh, in the classroom. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you can also then uh, integrate the, the theoretical, the hypothetical that you learn in the classroom with actual practical experience. Um, <clears throat> You know, classroom work is limited. You know, we try to get our students out in the field as much as possible, but even there, you know, it's limited. And in, in addition to that, it's also more general because, you know, we have to serve people going into a lot of different career paths, you know, beyond the, the specific one that you want to go into. Uh, and so it's a little bit more broad-based, whereas when you're actually on the job site, you're doing something very specific, and you're translating that, that hypothetical into practical and you know when I do because as part of the internship we have to do a site the faculty coordinator has to come out and visit you on the uh, at the site and uh, when I go out there when I'm meeting with the employer individually the first thing I do is I thank them I thank them for giving me this opportunity this chance to um, really round out your your education and um, yeah so this is uh, helping you to actually get out there and apply what it is you've learned in the classroom. Other benefits, uh, personal independence and sense of professional responsibility. Now, in, you know, I know that you folks are in a pressure cooker right now. Uh, things are chaotic uh, in addition to that. And I know that you can't really appreciate it at this moment, but I have the benefit of hindsight. And I look back at the time that you're currently in right now as one of the most exciting times of my life. Like I say, it kind of gets lost because you're so busy and you're under so much stress, you don't really appreciate it. But think about it for a minute. You are really at the beginning of your adulthood. And you have all these paths in front of you that you can choose from. That's exciting. Now, of course, you know, as you go through life, you will have a chance to always, you know, modify and tweak and, you know, move off in slightly different, you know, directions. But you're going to have, you know, probably have a, a family, a mortgage, you know, car payments. It's going to be much harder to just, you know, say, where, hmm, where do I want to go, you know, uh, like it is right now. So this is a really the, the, the first step. You're kind of dipping your toe in the water right now. And the entire, you know, world literally is open to you wherever you want to take it. And that's really exciting. It's unfortunate, like I say, you're under so much stress that you can't really appreciate that yet. But believe me, that's where you're at in your life. And so this is your first step out into your into your career path, into your professional identity. And um, so you get, to, uh, you get to choose that. And then a sense of professional responsibility. You're really transitioning into... You know, they say the first day of the rest of your life. I guess if it applies anywhere, it applies, you know, now. Uh, earn wages can't, uh, can't uh, beat that. Rather than paying for learning, you're actually getting paid to learn. Uh, enhanced permanent placement potentials. Uh, placement offers. Many, many times the uh, organizations will hire our interns. 
in some programs, that is their path to employment, is you have to be an intern first. It's kind of like a three-month interview. Uh, I did the same thing. I worked for an, uh, I got a job with an agency uh, as a summer intern, and when I graduated, I had a job waiting for me. Can't beat that. Uh, you get to learn about starting salaries. This is a really delicate topic that, like, you know, in the interview process, you do not bring up. You don't ask them, how much are you going to pay me? And how much time do we get off? <laughs> you simply don't go there. Um, you, you, you save that for after they offer you the position. Then you can negotiate. Um, but here, you're going to be, just by casual conversation, you're going to be learning about these things um, just kind of through the grapevine. So you get to learn about them. Uh, position options. So again, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. You know, uh, do I want to work for this organization? Do I want to work in this specific uh, in this specific position, or do I want to do something else? Okay, employers they benefit because they're hiring you, motivated, educated, productive employees. Uh, they can evaluate you as far as their potential permanent employees. So, like I say, it's kind of like a three month interview. Uh, it frees up other others of their workers who maybe have been been there longer to do other things rather than the kind of the entry level things that you'll really benefit from that they've already experienced. So they can move on to do something else and delegate those kind of tasks to you. And it's a win-win situation there. Uh, opportunity to impact the curriculum at River Falls. To me, I'm a faculty coordinator. To me, this is my most important interaction with the people, the organizations, the agencies that hire our graduates. I get to go out there and visit with these people and ask them point blank, what is it that is that you see as valuable in a graduate? And they can come back here and make that happen. Uh, one uh, a couple years ago, I was talking to one employer. They were saying certi certifications. Certifications and licensures are really, really uh, have a very high impact. Because it means that we don't have to spend time training the, the person, getting them certified. They come in the door with that. And that's time and money that we save. And they can hit the ground running. So now we have in our program area a lot of certifications and licensures. One of them, by the way, uh, this happened uh, two summers ago. I visited, I think it was about 25 interns I had that summer. And in three of the uh, locations I, I was asking this about, they said driving a tractor. Now, I never would have thought that that would have been such a high priority. Now, once they said it, it made sense, you know, as far as heavy equipment operation, you know, groundskeeping and some of the entry-level kind of tasks that need to be done. It makes total sense. So guess what? Now I've worked it out with the Lab Farm 2, and we have a tractor training program where they spend a couple of evenings driving heavy equipment. So this really helps to keep us cutting edge. Uh, they can also then promote themselves to you and the faculty. So, as far as student eligibility, there's two things. You need to complete 30 credits at the start of the internship. This means you have to be a sophomore or higher. The reason for this is that in the past we have sent out freshmen uh, at internships, and it shows a lot of initiative on their part, doing it so, so early in their, in their career, uh, but it just didn't work. They didn't have the knowledge base. Because again, this is where you're supposed to go out there and get on the job training. Well, they didn't have the knowledge base to allow them to be, you know, able to receive that. They were busy learning the basics. And the employer wasn't very happy either because they had to spend all their time teaching them those basics rather than actually getting some productive work out of them. So we do require then that uh, 30 credits at the start of the internship. Uh, minimum 2.0 GPA. Uh, if you have below 2.0, we'd rather that you focus on your academics than on internships. Uh, you can also obtain, you then also obtain approval from your faculty coordinator. I'll list those here in just a moment. And or the director of the internship program, which happens to be me. All right. So um, now if we have a posting, and last, last summer we had like over 700 postings, those are already pre-approved. But let's say you find one on your own. Then, um, then you would want to get approval from your faculty coordinator, you know, does this work? And by the way, let, well, since I'm talking about that, um, in many campuses that I've been associated with, they don't have near the outreach that we do here. 
In other words, you know, an internship is required. Okay, well, how do I find one? Okay, you have to go out there and find one. Okay, great. So you spend time beating the bushes, making cold calls, finding an internship. We do a lot of that work for you. We've set up relationships, like I say, over 700 organizations over decades. And so those that you see posted, those have already been approved. But it doesn't mean that you can't do what many other campuses require. That is, you go out there and find your own. Um, and all that's required, well, there's three requirements. Number one, that it be within your field of interest. And these are things that your faculty coordinator are going to look at when you say, can I, can I use this as an internship? Is it within your field of interest? Secondly, does it give you a variety of experiences? In other words, is it actually an internship and not just a summer job? Okay. And then thirdly, does it give you the required number of hours? For your standard typical summer internship of four credits, that's 390 hours. During the fall and spring semester, uh, you should be doing a two credit half internship. And that's going to be 195 hours. So those are the three requirements that, again, if you go up to your faculty board and say, I think I have a good, you know, internship, will this work? They're going to look at those three things. Okay. And by the way, the reason we came about 390 hours, we think of a summer as 10 weeks. It's actually a little bit more, but we think of it as 10 weeks. And 40 hours a week would be 400 hours. But some organizations, if they hire you for 40 hours a week, their own internal policy requires them to pay you benefits. And so we did have some instances where they couldn't hire our interns because they couldn't hire them for 40 hours a week because they couldn't afford the benefits. So we said, okay, hire them for 39 hours a week. So 39 times 10, 390 hours. All right, so how do you get started? Attend an informational meeting, which you are doing right now. Complete the student internship information and agreement form. You can get these on our website. I'll show you that in just a moment. Or in our internship office, uh, talk to Jolene Summer. She's the director of the internship office, and that is housed in the dean's office on the second floor. And she can give you this form. What this form basically is, is two things. Number one, uh, it's so Jolene can verify that you have 30 credits or will have 30 credits and a 2.0 or higher GPA. The second thing is that by signing the agreement form, that if you use one of our 700 or so postings, that you will use it as an internship. We've had issues in the past where people would use it as a summer job. In other words, they would get the job and they simply wouldn't apply for as an internship. Um, and what that does then, it took away an opportunity from a student who needs an internship. And like I say, we spend a lot of time developing that internship and we're not meaning it to be a job for it. Uh, for that, you go to career services. This is an internship opportunity for you. So that's what that, that agreement form does. Okay, then contact your faculty coordinator. Again, I'll show you who you want to contact in your different areas. Uh, and they'll start helping you get the ball rolling. Um, or, I'm sorry, actually what they can help you do even before then is, again, direct you towards some good internships. Like I say, you know, I've been doing this for many years and working with these employers. So if someone comes in and says, you know, I really want to do such and such for my career. Oh, well, here's a, uh, an internship that students have had a lot of good success with in the past that I think is right down your alley. So they can help you with uh, finding that best internship. Also, contact your academic advisor about how that internship will fit into your actual curriculum. So, um, again, like I say, in some programs it's required, so it's going to just satisfy that requirement. But if not, then they can perhaps use it to substitute in for a different course or maybe as a directed elective or uh, what have you. Okay, then attend that pre-work seminar in the spring. I uh, do three of these uh, in April and sometimes the beginning of May. And this is after you have been offered a position or are very you know, confident that you will. Uh, you only need to attend one. I offer three times just for you know, people and their schedules. Uh, but there I get into the, really the, the nitty gritty, the details of how to actually do the internship, what's expected as far as the status reports, as far as the learning objectives, as far as the special project, the site visit, the employer evaluation form, a post-work seminar, all those mechanics. That's what we do there, right? So you do need to, this is mandatory, you do need to attend that pre-work seminar or its virtual equivalent, however things shake out for the spring. OK, 
Okay, so here are the faculty coordinators. Uh, for ag business, ag marketing, and uh, uh, finance is Dr. Uh, Boitai. For ag education, university extension is Dr. Graham. For ag engineering, technology, and ag engineering is Dr. Olson. Animal science, dairy science, that's Dr. Kelm. For animal science, nutrition, and co-ops, that'd be Dr. Cooper. For animal science and meat animal, that would be Dr. Uh, Youngdal uh, Jang. For companion animal, that's Dr. Beth Rausch. For zoos, that is Dr. Brian Greco. For crop science, that's Dr. Justin. For conservation, environmental planning, and environmental science, that's me. For equine science, Western and English and pre-vet, that's Dr. Rain. For food science and poultry, that's Dr. Walters. For geology and for soils, that's Dr. Dolliver. And for horticulture, that is Dr. Matthew. So, um, we organize these postings by, uh, by program area. Um, so, hopefully, if you're in horticulture, you're going to do a horticulture um, internship. But once in a while, we'll get, you know, a posting that really fits more under conservation environmental planning that a horticulture student finds to be very attractive. And so, you know, in that case, even though they're a horticulture student, I would be their faculty coordinator. They would come to me to work out again all those uh, details. All right. So what the faculty coordinator can then do is they can discuss your interests and career goals, like I say, match you up with the with the, with a good internship, um, explore the different internship locations, and also faculty coordinators, we're the ones that develop uh, these internships. And by the way, if you have a, you know, if you hear of one uh, that you think should be an internship, let your faculty coordinator know, or the faculty coordinator in that program area know, and they will go out and try to set that up. Uh, they can review the intern sites available to you and again make recommendations. They can also help you with your resume and your cover letter. They can assist in lining up interviews. Sometimes those interviews are done at the job site. Sometimes they're done virtually. Sometimes they're done here on campus. They can help with that too. All right, so as far as finding the best internship, it actually is, is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I, I look at it as two different approaches. The first one is to, you know, sit down and think of where, if I could walk out of the door today and walk into my ideal job, what would that be? All right, what would be the ideal career path for me to do? And then simply try to find an internship in that career path. Okay, sounds pretty simple. But, you know, with that, let's say you want to work in a certain position for a certain organization. See if there's one that's being advertised with that organization and with that position. And then obviously go for that. Because like I say, the experience that you're going to be getting, the network that's going to be developing, you know, it's going to be basically customized for your career path. If it is within that uh, ideal uh, situation that you have, you know, planned for. Um, now, like I say, we had over 700 last year. That's a lot, but it certainly is not exhaustive. There's many, many others. And the further away you get from this area, the fewer we have. So if you know, you know, like I say, feel free to pursue one on your own. Uh, if you find one that we simply haven't posted, talk to the faculty coordinator in that program area. They'll again, look at those three different criteria and uh, approve it or not. But again, don't be limited by our postings, you know, think in terms of if I could walk out of the door today and I want to work for, you know, XYZ Corporation doing, you know, ABC position and we don't have a posting, give them a call and see if you can't set one up. All right. I'm going to talk maybe a little bit more about that later. All right. Uh, so that's one general approach. I, you know, think of your ideal uh, career path and then try to find the one that matches it as closely as possible. Uh, the second approach would be, let's say you're like a lot of us, and you're not exactly sure what it is that you want to do. I mean, when I was in your position, I wasn't exactly sure. And like I say, I had some, I had jobs before, but never a career. 
And so I wasn't exactly positive of the specific career path I wanted to take. Well, in that case then, use this opportunity to explore. And again, I would recommend multiple internships. Um, like the example I gave before, you know, I want to work for the DNR, I'm just not really sure where or doing what. Well, go in and, and, and get an internship in that position. Or I want to work in a natural resource management agency. I'm not sure if, it, if I want to do it with the DNR or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, do two internships, one with each. So that will be the second, I guess, category, is to look at your internship as a kind of as an exploration opportunity to, you know, to evaluate your various options for future employment. Okay, so a method for locating an internship. I'll review the internship postings on the internship bulletin board near the atrium in the egg side building. Do not remove the posting, please. <laughs> Everyone needs to look at those. Or in the weekly internship bulletins uh, on our site. I'm going to uh, break off here and I'm going to show you that site. So if I go to the uh, cafe's homepage uh, right here, you'll see on the left-hand toolbar, internships. If I expand that and you go to students, then here we have the internship bulletins. So you can go ahead and locate uh, internship postings uh, here. Now these again are ones that we have posted out in the atrium and some uh, professors like myself I have a separate bulletin board where I also post them a second time. It's up on the third floor um, where all my conservation students walk by all the time. Um, but again, you can find it here as well. And by the way, like I said, I don't want to get too much into this because I want to, you know, really something more for the pre-work seminar. But as far as the internship forms, you can find a lot on the, on the same page. Like I said, the student agreement form. All right, you can go ahead and fill it out, print it out, and bring it into Jolene in room 201 i.e. the Dean's Office, uh, and again, here's some other forms. I'm not going to get into other, you can look at the learning objectives if you'd like to explore that a little bit more. But again, that's more for the, um, more for the pre-work seminar. But anyways, here's uh, another place where you can find these uh, postings. All right, that is again, uh, locations. Okay, uh, you'll notice at the bottom of each posting, there's a three-digit number uh, at the bottom right-hand side of it. Uh, that's what you want to do to get more information, either from Jolene in the internship office or, you know, email your faculty coordinator. Uh, I get those all the time. You know, I'd like more information on uh, posting number 307, 410, and 415. Now, what I do, in, and Jolene puts together a spreadsheet that shows who has filled out that student agreement form. And so I'll check that, and if they have filled it out, then I'll just go ahead and send them the full posting. Because as you'll notice, the postings do not have the application details. Again, that's because we want not this to be used as a summer job board. We want it to be used for internships. So you have to fill out that, that student agreement form beforehand. Then we send you off the, the full uh, posting. All right. Uh, like I said, uh, also you can find your own. Like I said, you can, you can uh, look for the ideal opportunity uh, that we may not have gotten to yet as far as developing that, that relationship with those employers, don't hesitate to try to find it out, uh, find one on your own. Now, I mentioned before you can make some cold calls to these organizations. Just a couple hints. Number one, uh, you need to try to you know use your people skills and kind of navigate <laughs> through the process. In other words, the person that picks up the phone is probably not the person that can make the decision as to whether or not they have an internship or want to develop an internship for you. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, the person that answers the phone just has a lot of things they have to, you know, do. And you might get the cold shoulder, kind of the brush off. You know, hello, can I help you? Yeah, I'm calling about, you know, an in possible internship for your organization. Oh, we don't do internships. Click. You know, that's what you want to avoid. So maybe do a little bit of, uh, you know, homework beforehand. You know, look at the, uh, you know, uh, organization's, you know, website and see if you can't find an actual person. Uh, maybe within that department that you want to work for, uh, that might be better able to give you a yes or a no. <clears throat> then when you call them, the first person that answers the phone, you can just say, I'd like to talk to so-and-so, you know, and that way it kind of gets you around that first hurdle. And likewise, when you do get that person answering the phone, they too may be, you know, inundated with work. 
And there again, you want to avoid the brush up. If you start launching into, you know, hi, my name is, I'd like to talk to you about an internship. I'm really interested, you know, they might be in the middle of something. Oh, sorry, we don't do internships, another quit. So again, to avoid that hurdle, um, again, use your people skills. Hello, my name is, and I'd like to know when a good time would be to call back if we can talk maybe about for 15 minutes about intern possible internships. Now, maybe 85% of the time they can say, oh, well, this is a good time. What, we, what do you have in mind? But if they are in the middle of something, rather than just hanging up on you, oh, good, okay, well, I tell you what, I, you know, I have lunch at noon. Give me a call then. We can chat. <clears throat> that way you don't get that brush up. Okay? And again, keep in mind those three things. Within your field of interest, a variety of experiences, and adequate number of hours. All right. Um, let me just say, uh, again, sorry to go off on these tangents, but while I'm talking about hours, like I say, your standard internship is in the summer and for four credits, 390 hours or more. Now, we don't typically allow two credit summer internships unless it's the organization that limits the hours. In other words, if an organization says, oh yeah, you can work for us as an intern in the summertime, however, we can only give you 200 hours. If that's the case, then contact your faculty coordinator, they'll contact me, and I'll verify that it is the organization that's limiting the hours, and then I'll usually say yes, okay? Likewise, when it comes to a spring or fall internship, those are typically limited to two credits, 195 hours. The reason being, again, is we want you to focus on your academics and not have the internship get in the way of that. Now, like I said, there's exceptions there as well. Uh, a few years ago, I had two students in one program area that both wanted to do four credit spring internships. And so the faculty coordinator came to me and said, you know, will you give an exception for these two students? So I looked into it. The one student had like a 3.9 GPA. They finished all their coursework. All they had left in their degree was finishing an internship. So for the spring, they would be taking no courses. And they had also worked at that place already. So for them, I said, yes, absolutely, go ahead and do it. The other student was, have, was struggling academically. They wanted to do like a 15 to 18 credit load that spring. It was a new job for them. In that case, I said, no, limit it to 200 hours, 195 hours on the two credit internship. So anyways, that's how the, the hours work out. And by the way, you can also do an internship over multiple semesters. In other words, uh, consecutive semesters. You can start in the spring and finish in the summer. You can start in the summer and finish in the fall. You can start in the fall and finish in the spring. And the way it works out as far as registration, you're gonna register for the semester in which you do the majority of your hours. So if you start like in May and get in like maybe 10% of your hours during the spring semester and 90% during the summer, it is a summer internship. So it's gonna be counted in the semester in which you do the majority of your hours. So identify the site yourself and get approval, like I say, from your faculty coordinator, as I just mentioned. Okay, secure the in uh, internship again, the uh, information agreement form. Uh, again, vis visit your faculty coordinator. Develop a resume and cover letter. Again, your faculty coordinator can help. Career services also can help. Uh, interview with a potential employer. Notify the internship office and faculty coordinator upon acceptance of a position. Once you've accepted, you've been offered and accepted the position, that's when you contact the faculty coordinator. That's when we really get the ball rolling. We're gonna have you fill out additional forms. We're gonna have you start working on your learning objectives and basically get the ball rolling. And then also make you aware that you have to attend that pre-work seminar. So once you've accepted the position, that's when we really start the whole registration process. Uh, obtain internship again, uh, you must take it for credit. Again, if it's one of our postings, you must do it for credit. As far as interviewing, like I said before, you might do it on campus. You might do it by phone or by video conference. You might do it on the job site. Uh, bring a resume, appropriate paperwork. I'm not going to talk too much about this. Um, you can, again, discuss it with your faculty coordinator, discuss it with career services. Be prepared. You know, career services, again, of all the campuses I've been associated with, our career services are far and away the best. They do all kinds of things. 
They'll help you with your resume, your cover letter writing. They'll, they'll set up mock interviews uh, where you can practice your interviewing skills. They even set up like these etiquette dinners, how you can have interviews over lunch and not, you know, <laughs> embarrass yourself. Uh, but be prepared, you know. Um, anticipate questions, you know. And not just the softball questions, but the hard questions. Like, you know, why you? Why this position? Why now? You know? So, you know, be prepared. Uh, ask questions. Again, this is a two-way street during that interview. You're, you're interviewing them as well. Dress appropriately. Even if, you know, uh, like in the background, you might be, you know, dressed in, you know, you know, outdoor wear. For the interview, you want to be dressed professionally. Okay. Uh, know when you will be available to start. This is not the time for you to be, you know, when can you start? Oh, let me think now. Uh, finals week is blah, 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 okay, and then I need to do this, need to, you know, move out of my apartment, okay. No, you want to have that, you know, I can start June 1st. You want to have that information at the tip of your, uh, uh, tip of your uh, fingers. All right, before leaving campus, again, you must attend that pre-work uh, seminar. Again, uh, you'll be alerted to that. Uh, for all international uh, internships, uh, contact the Office of International Education. That's in Rodley Hall. Develop a set of learning objectives, like I say, with your faculty coordinator. Rough drafts are found your faculty coordinator. Uh, revised draft, which you then take to the job site, and you make your final draft form. Complete the placement data and the pass-fail forms and turn them into, again, the uh, internship offers. And if you did notice quickly, on that site that I went to on the cafe's homepage in the internship area under forms, these were also there. The placement data form is really contact information. It allows us to be able to contact you to set up the uh, site visit, as well as the pass-fail form. That's really kind of your registration form, if you will, the pass-fail form. All right, uh, then register for the internship course and, of course, pay the tuition. All right, while you're at the internship site, uh, discuss and have your employer sign your learning objectives. It'll be your, your final draft once they've given their input. Uh, complete uh, these these status reports. They're they're basically bi-weekly reports. Well, they're kind of staggered. Some are, you know, one week consecutive weeks. Others there's a gap. Um, there's six of them total. Then you can send them in. Again, this is more information for the pre-work seminar. Uh, identify and complete a special project. That is really just a small project that you do in addition to your normal activities that you and your supervisor kind of work out. Uh, again, it's really just to expand your experiences more for your resume. Uh, then at the end, you provide your employer with an evaluation form that they fill out on your behalf. And there will be an outside visit or uh, a conference call or phone call, depending on the distance. And then attend after you come back uh, in September, usually the third week in September, there'll be a final post-work uh, seminar. We'll, we'll wrap things up, your special project will be due, and that'll be the last thing then before we uh, give you the grade. All right, uh, you, uh, always you know, keep in contact with your, or think of your faculty coordinator as a contact to answer questions, solve issues, provide support, whatever is needed. Um, they'll be reading your, your reports, all right, they'll do an on-site visit. And as far as the special project, again, this is more for the pre-work seminar, but uh, like I say, you negotiate this with your supervisor and then run the idea past your faculty coordinator. The only time your faculty coordinator will say no is if it's exactly what you're already doing. Like I say, the whole purpose of a special project is to get you more experiences. Uh, the employer will complete the evaluation again of your performance, as we just talked about and contact your faculty coordinator uh, or the internship office for assistance or any issues whatsoever. All right, we're there to help, so don't hesitate. I had a student call me once and they just, they just vented for like 20 minutes about how their coworker was, was lazy and worthless. And of course, I'm thinking all this time, okay, how do we solve the problem? When they took a breath, I jumped in and I said, okay, here's what I think we should do. They said, no, I don't want you to do anything. I just had to tell somebody. <laughs> they just had to get it off their chest. They just had to vent. And great, perfect. Call me up. That's what we're here for. Um, they didn't want to. They didn't want to approach their supervisor because they would have thought that they were a whiner. So 
they meant it to me. Perfect. So anything we can do to help, to support, that's what we're there for. Okay, so additional uh, assistance, like I say, the faculty coordinator is your, is your point person. Always contact them with any issues, any uh, help that's needed. The internship office, like I say, is in the dean's office. Uh, Jolene Summers is the director of that office. She can help, and then I am the internship director for the college, and again, you can certainly contact me as well. So, I hope that this has provided you some uh, information when it comes to internships, and uh, like I say, uh, this is a golden opportunity to set you up for your career. So take the highest advantage of it, be strategic, and in the internship that you that you select, uh, consider doing multiple internships, and then when you're there, uh, do your utmost to be uh, exposed to as many different opportunities as possible, and network as much as possible. Go out on lunches, uh, sit in on meetings, you know, try to get yourself invited to as many different uh, meetings and experiences as possible. This again, like I say, is a golden opportunity. It will really set you up to be very competitive. When, it, when it's time for you then to uh, start your career. Okay, contact me with any uh, follow-up questions and good luck to all of you.